Hi, this is Empowering Introductory Algebra, the series created to assist students to overcome any basic algebra deficiencies and build a strong foundation leading to college level studies. Hi, I'm Bob Young, Assistant Professor of Mathematics at Bavard Community College. With the help of the WBCC crew, we will bring you introductory algebra lessons like no other. Let's pick up where we left off and we'll show you why. Now remember in our last episode, we were discussing rational ex e expressions here. We were um, simplifying rational expressions, which are polynomial fractions. We were adding and subtracting them. And we want to go back to the graphic here because we're going to close on subtraction. And remember the four steps here for addition and subtraction of rational expressions. And the most important step one, whenever you add or subtract fractions, whether they be variable or numerical, get that LCD, the least common denominator. Remember, and if you can win that battle, you're in there. And that's going to carry over to our lesson today, as a matter of fact. So in order to get that crucial LCD, factor the denominators if necessary, and break all numbers into prime factors. Multiply each number the greatest number of times that it appears in any one factorization. Two, make equal fractions with that common denominator. Three, add or subtract depending on the problem, put it over the common denominator. And step four, always look to reduce. So if you missed these in the last episode, make sure you get these notes down and we will go to the last example here. And some of you might be saying at this point, when we go to this example, the last one for subtraction, boy, these problems are getting more difficult young and things are getting tough and it's not as easy as it was in the earlier episodes. But remember, we're preparing you for those college level courses, so we want to get you up to par. All right, so when we look at this one, we've got a subtraction fraction problem. And remember, I said that minus sign is dangerous, so you can take it and either put it through the top or bottom. Now, we really only put it through the bottom when these two are opposites. And obviously, these aren't opposites here. Most of the time, 99%, I like to take it and run it through the top. So I'm going to make that a plus negative 2. So I'm going to put this sign on the 2 where I won't lose it. All right, then I'm going to factor the denominator. So we have two trinomials here. So when we factor these, j squared plus 5j plus 6, the factors of 6 that will add to give me 5 in the middle is going to be j plus 3 times j plus 2. And of course, you could FOIL this and check it from previous lessons. The second trinomial, these aren't too bad of ones to factor, j, j. Factors of 2, the outside that will add to give me 3, not a lot of choices here, plus 2, plus 1. All right, so now that we've got these denominators factored, we can come down here and set up the shell, the LCD, the all-important LCD. So what you do to get it, which one has the most J plus 1s in it? This one has 1. So that's part of the denominator. Which one has the most j plus 2s? Well, each one has a j plus 2, but the most in any one, 1. And which one, which other one do we need? A j plus 3. So never let it be said out there that Young doesn't have a sense of humor. Check the LCD out, j plus 1, j plus 2, j plus 3. So let's go ahead and set that up here on the other side. Now we need to make equal fractions out of what we started with, with this common denominator, step two. See, so once you get everything um, in order here, you can look at this one and say, gee, which one is this one missing, Young, to become the one with the common denominator? Well, it's missing the j plus one. So we'll go ahead and multiply both top and bottom by the j plus one, because remember, whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. Now what do I have up here in the numerator? Well, some distribution. So when I multiply the j through, that's what's going to go here. So j times j distributing, j squared, j times 1 plus j. All right. Second fraction. Here's the common denominator we established. This one, the second fraction, is missing the what, Young? Well, it's missing the, hmm, j plus 3. And again, whatever you do to the bottom, you gots to do to the top. All right, so we're going to distribute that negative 2 through and get negative 2j minus 6. So watch those signs there. 
Now we can do, if you remember in previous episodes, the CLT bird, all right? The bird that flies and collects those like terms and puts these two fractions into one, all right? So let me go ahead here. Notice, boy, these are getting complicated as we get deeper into our understanding of algebra. It just gets better and better. All right, so adding and collecting the like terms in the top, there are, there's only this one j squared, so we'll go we'll ahead and bring him down. One j and a negative two j gives us a minus one j, and then we've got the minus six. So that's the answer, right, Young? Well, I don't know. This fraction may reduce because I'm sensing something may factor in the top here. Let's try to factor this top. Are there factors of six that will give me a negative one in the middle? I think so. And I think when we factor this, we're gonna get JJ minus three plus two all over our common denominator. So you always have to remember step four when it comes to fractions. It doesn't matter if they're ones with variables or ones with numbers. You always have to look to reduce. So now notice we've got the j plus two over the j plus two. Anything divided by itself reduces to one. And we've got the chop going there. We can chop those j plus twos out. All right. And then that's the final answer. j minus three all over j plus one times j plus three. Now why can't you chop the j minus three and the j plus three? They're not opposites and they are not the same creature. Hands off. If you try to chop these, you'll hurt your hand. You'll go, Hachoo! you ever see one of those guys try to chop one of those cinder blocks and not make it? And they'll go, oh, their hand will be like that. Your grade will be like that if you try to chop where you don't have to chop.